getting close to halfway point with the numbers of practices and uh, I feel like in, in some aspects we probably are really pleasantly surprised on the way they picked up a few things, uh, new things that they've not done before or things we're calling a little differently, et cetera. On the other hand, I think we're a long, long way, especially when we're doing the fast tempo operations, a long way from cleaning up enough missed assignments and other things that are hurting us. Uh, a lot of the conditioning element, I know we're physically in condition, but mentally right now we're not staying focused through that and uh, causes a little breakdown in assignments or breakdown in fundamentals, and either one of those will get you in trouble. Uh, the most pleasing thing, I think, overall is attitude. The most disappointing thing right now, and, and this is just two, two practices, I think, with live tackling, but the most disappointing and concerning thing right now is just our tackling. So that tomorrow will be a huge thing. It's not going to be as much about X's and O's tomorrow. We want to give them enough X's and O's to strain them a little bit and see who can learn and function under pressure. But it's really more about fundamentals and, and seeing if we're going to improve in tackling. Hey, Ellis, tackling's been an issue here two or three years, really. Uh, is, it, is there something you see that's causing it, uh, and how hard is it to fix it? Well, I think there's, I don't, I don't know what caused it, and but I think that the thing I think you have to do as a coach is you can't take too much for granted, even on our level. You recruit some of the best players in the country to come to a school like Auburn, and you can't take for granted that they all know how to tackle exactly right and not, don't need to work on it. So what we've tried to do is put a tremendous emphasis on tackling every day in our drills. And then obviously when we're allowed to tackle live, you know, hopefully we'll improve in that area. So that's the biggest thing, work on it, teach it the right way, and the more time you put in it, you're also sending a message to them that it's important. So, you know, tackling sometimes is just want to, but then when they have the want to and it's still not good, then you got to get the, the fundamentals improved and you got to make sure they're doing things the right way. <clears throat> Actually, some of the angle tackles in open field have not been that bad. Uh, they're the individuals who are bad, but as a team, some of that's pretty good. Tackling, I'm talking about the physical elements where we've got those times to really fit up on a guy and make a good physical tackle, and I haven't seen a lot of them on the field. So that, you know, whether it's want to, or know how, or just an attitude or whatever it is, we've got to keep harping on it and keep a finger on it and demand it. Is that surprising to see with so many veteran guys that, that you have on defense, guys that are well, playing Well, if you look now, a lot of veterans up front. I don't have a lot of veterans in my group. Now, I've got some guys who got in some games last year, but other than Jake Holland, I don't have a very experienced group at linebacker at all. And if you'll include the star position, you know, we moved Justin Garrett out there. He is without a doubt the most, what I'm talking about now is tackling issue. He's the best we got. He can't play much ball. So, not, not in games around here. So, it isn't always game experience and those type of things when it comes down to something as simple as physically tackling. Uh, I, you know, we'll, we'll see. You know, by the end of spring practice, I'll know whether it's want to or know how to. What makes Justin <clears throat> so good right now in tackling? We've got great closing speed. You know, he, and that, that's huge when you make an open field and space tackles. And he's got good what we call contact speed. In other words, when he's about to make contact, he has that explosiveness where he runs through it and doesn't gather and, 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 and settle. He runs through things. and He's got that great contact speed. So he's one of the ones that's been a bright spot. And we've used him as an example and pointed out to other players. And hopefully it'll be infectious and another guy will start picking up on it. But uh, that's the biggest thing I see. He's got that, he's got an attitude. He's got great athleticism. And he's got that closing speed with good angles. And he's going to make contact. And he likes contact. What do you think of the reaction speed of the defensive line in there in those spots? I think it's been OK. You know, I, I, I haven't really seen anything that just doesn't look like it belongs on the SEC football field, but I really hadn't seen a lot of impact plays. I haven't seen a lot of just dominant physical one-on-one -on -one plays, and and that's something you want to see. Uh, you got to have those three or four guys on each side of the ball that can make those kind of plays. You know, stuff you can't coach. Uh, you can keep drawing up all these plays and defenses and everything, but players at some point in time have got to make an impact play, you know, and that's what I really haven't seen yet. Do you see guys that you think have the have the ability to make those plays? Yeah, I mean, if you just start with the measurables, you know, the offseason, the quickness, the speed, the times, you know, on the watch, uh, what they're lifting in the weight room, you look at them on, on you know, what we call on the hoof. Uh, when you translate it on the football field, uh, 
I think we've got some players that are capable of doing it, but you know, until we see it, you know, it is what it is. Last year, this defense had uh, some flashes of greatness. An example, the LSU game. What do you think is the X factor for this defense this year? I'm not sure, and I, and I agree with you 100% on that, because as we watched game tape from last year, their defense played very solid in many games. Uh, I didn't see the dynamic plays in games that would give you your team a turnaround, you know, the sudden changes, the interceptions for long gainers, setting up touchdowns, knocking balls loose and recovering fumbles. Didn't see a lot of that. Did see them play tough. Saw them play, you know, and, and bow up in games like LSU and play physical and try to play tough. Uh, but the, the X factor is, you know, what I'm talking about, those dynamic plays, you know, hits on the quarterback that either put the ball on the ground or cause interceptions, uh, hits on the ball carry that spit the ball on the ground, interceptions, return for big yardage. we got to start finding some of those plays. And, and hopefully, you know, we're doing the right things as coaches to put them in position. And then the players have got to make plays.